Welcome to the session. So uh, this talk is more um, to talk about the details, right? So um, I will give you some, some more insights about the technology that we plan with, uh, with HANA Cloud. And hopefully it gives you um, a better understanding uh, what we are planning for, for GA end of the year. Um, my name is Rüdiger Karl. I'm part of the product management team in, in Waldorf. Trends and challenges. Hopefully you haven't seen the slides. <laughs> uh, and then, okay, what is HANA Cloud in detail? What are the use cases? And I'm pretty sure you have seen the use cases before, but I think I will, I will talk a bit more uh, between the lines. So, okay. Good, the trends I think are clear. We have data grow. Um, most of uh, the data will be residing in public cloud because of the cheap storage, the cheap uh, cloud infrastructure. The pricing point is unbeatable in, in, in cloud infrastructures from Amazon or Azure. So that means there's no way, no way um, to, 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 to have other, other um, storage solutions uh, on-prem because they can scale in their infrastructure across their, their pools, their storage pools. Uh, they, they can very easily shift um, the, the resources in the infrastructure. For, so for them, it's very, very easy to, um, to offer cheap storage with a very good price point. So 49%, that's the prediction by IDC, will be in public cloud um, in 2025. And... Um, in 2020, um, the, the prediction is also to have 60% of the budget, of the IT budget, um, is assigned to cloud IT infrastructure. So this is a clear trend. Um, and companies, I know, they, they, they watch or they, they, they look around to see what are the competitors are doing, so what, what, what are the analysts are whispering, and then uh, to, see, to see what, are, what is going on. And the CIOs then, um, they talk to you, maybe you are in the IT department, and they say, strategic direction for the next two years, we need to migrate um, our major applications or some applications into the cloud. We need to save money. We need to use these um, economies of scale for, uh, for our applications. And the reality is, you come from an on-premise uh, space. You have on-premises data centers with zero data, different formats, complex infrastructures. And what happens then, because you know, um, you had a sleepless night and then you say, okay, what should we do, what should we do? And the, the common approach is as following. And this is what we observed and also what, what IDC or Forrester is observing. Um, customers, they start with their on-prem data center database and an attached or connected application. And then they start with a very tiny web application to see how it works, how does access works, what is about the performance latency, what about network latency, what about security, all these things, and then uh, create a checklist, uh, create the effort or estimate the efforts, make some predictions for other projects, etc. And then you see, okay, maybe uh, we can use another um, data store in another um, cloud. So we have two different cloud providers now in the game, and um, um, apart from our on-premise data center. And then this data lake is connected to your database. And again, what about security, etc.? And then you say, okay, why cannot this web application access the data lake directly? Well, you have another another connectivity between cloud providers between uh, on-prem and uh, cloud. And 74% of all enterprises, they use um, this approach. And um, there are a lot of questions popping up. I see here that uh, you cross boundaries between your on-premise side and the public cloud side and the private cloud side. And so this hybrid multi-cloud uh, approach brings uh, some challenges. How to set up, how to connect, what about performance, what about security, what about data integration, what about data type mapping, et cetera, et cetera. And this is where we want to bring HANA Cloud into the game. HANA Cloud is aiming to help you 
to tackle these questions um, and to simplify your transition to the cloud. And I show you why and how. And I introduce the partner cloud to you now. And um, first of all, before I come to the technical details, the question is, OK, how HANA Cloud fits into this picture of HANA Cloud Services? HANA Cloud Services is a brand name announced by SAP at Sapphire this year. And um, HANA Cloud Services is um, a brand to cover the data value chain. So this is how we call it. Data value chain is starting with storing, processing data. It's about data volume, amount of data. Um, store them secured, securely, uh, transactional, um, provide all the um, database qualities in the cloud, and then we add value to this data with semantic knowledge, with harmonized data, with um, trusted data, with data lineage, with data flows. And this is what we provide with Data Warehouse Cloud. And then we, we add usage. And this is uh, analytics cloud, where we represent data um, and, and their, their business uh, semantic in a uh, fancy UI, where you have predictive, uh, where you have planning capabilities. And um, amount, value, and usage, this is uh, the power pack for your data value chain. And this comes with, um, with um, HANA Cloud Services, just to give you the holistic picture and where HANA Cloud fits into it. OK, and this is HANA Cloud. And you see, first of all, there is a core in the middle. And this, this is our HANA engine. So that means that we use um, all the HANA core principles that you know from the on-prem world. Um, so in-memory, columnar design, compression. Um, we have this multi-model processing with um, um, different data types, relational data types, geospatial, graph, text, docs, or so we will reuse these capabilities. Why not? We do not reinvent the wheel, not at all. But we will add uh, some specific capabilities that are key elements for, for, for the cloud. And this is connectivity and the economies of scale. And connectivity is all about virtualization. Why virtualization? Virtualization means we do not replicate data. We do not want to move data from other data stores to HANA Cloud. Could be an option, for sure. But by default, it's not the intention. Because you save money. Uh, we, we do not duplicate data. Um, you have a rapid access to other sources. And this is what we mean with virtualization. We have some self-tuning pro or performance optimizations in our virtualization technologies. I come to that later on. And this includes, for instance, caching. And then would you say, oh, caching is a kind of replication. Yes, it is, but it's not primarily a replication. It's a performance optimization. It's an option that, that comes automatically with HANA Cloud. And then uh, what, you, what you also see is that we, will, uh, that, that we will store metadata information. Metadata information doesn't mean um, that, that, that these are data about uh, remote source definitions, whatever. No, these metadata information are all about what, what is the meaning, the semantic meaning of all these data in the remote sources. So that means we have uh, a remote source with business data. We have a remote source uh, with, with customer data, IoT data. And uh, for, for an administrator or for a business analyst, it's, or even for a developer, it's essential to know, OK, where are my data? Where are they located? Where, what are the right resources or right, right remote sources to connect to? Um, and then you can easily crawl or explore your remote data sources and connect to the right ones uh, for your application. And this is all about metadata. It's much more than you know, uh, structures. Uh, types. I mean, for sure, it's all the metadata. But it's more than that. It's, it's also to search for some of uh, these uh, business semantics that you see, OK, where are my um, 
material data, where are my customer data, etc. Okay, next, uh, what we added is persistency, or let's say, um, uh, use the economies of scale. And for economies of scale means um, that we have more than one storage option. It's not in memory anymore. HANA is an in-memory database for sure. So we ensure uh, real-time uh, performance. But, you know, we have cheap storage by the cloud infrastructure providers. And we want to leverage these cheap storage options in HANA in HANA Cloud. And so we have uh, so a disk uh, storage option and a storage option with our built-in relational data lake. So I come to that as well. So that means that we can optimize um, our cost point for HANA Cloud by using um, the various storage options that you have in the cloud. OK, and you see elastic scale. Elastic scale, I come to that later gives HANA Cloud the capability uh, to breathe with the workload. Breathe means grow and shrink, right? And this is exactly what we are aiming with HANA Cloud to give you the best, press, best uh, cost point um, by, um, uh, by, by adapting our um, HANA Cloud size to your workload. OK, and the value proposition is the last slide on this level, but I think it's quite useful. Gives you the power couples. Power couples, what does it mean? You see on the left side and you see the right side. And you go from top to down. And you see HANA benefits, so we reuse HANA benefits, all what, I, uh, what you know from the HANA engine, and you combine this with the power of cloud. So HANA cloud is a cloud-native uh, software. So it's not comparable with HANA on-prem. And it's not comparable with HANA as a service. HANA as a service was just, you know, our first shot bringing, bringing our HANA on-prem code line to the cloud, right? But this is not the, the, the ideal approach. The pro approach that we use with HANA Cloud is cloud native. Cloud native means we componentize our HANA software into microservices. And we run these microservices in containers. And we let orchestrate these containers by Kubernetes. OK, and this means also that this software, HANA Cloud, is a complete new product line. It's a new code line. It's completely different from HANA on-prem, OK? But we reused the core principles of HANA, as I said before, right? And I think this is important to know that we have here really different software stacks. We have different software. HANA Cloud is a, is a new software. It's a new next-generation cloud database platform. And you see here data on demand and streamlined access. So both together access data anywhere, with any format, in a very easy way. And the, the lower line means, OK, from a developer experience, I want to integrate very easily with any source within my development environment. So that's something that we will also provide, or that, that is our promise um, for, with HANA Cloud. OK, let's come to the details. First of all, what's the difference uh, you may know between on-prem and cloud? You see on-prem on the left side is the full stack you need to manage. Coming from the hardware operating system, database, the full stack you need to manage. In a cloud environment, and we talk about platform as a service, you see that we have a managed service for operating system hardware that is provided by the cloud infrastructure provider. And on top, you have the HANA service. The HANA service you have, um, you see here, that's a, it's another box. It's not part of this managed service box. Reason is that um, we, we offer two options. One option is a fully managed HANA database. So don't, you don't take care about backup, restore. Uh, you don't take care about sizing, about capacity, nothing, right? But there are customers, they want to keep control about the service, about the, about the configuration, about uh, specific um, adjustments for the, for the uh, cloud uh, database platform. And so we give this control to, um, to the customers if required, but we can also fully manage HANA, the HANA database. The data layer and the application are under control of the customer, and that's the difference to software as a service. HANA Cloud is a platform as a service. 
When you talk about um, DWC or SAC, that's a software as a service. Okay. So, first one is when we come to the technical detail details, that's our virtualization. And you see in the middle, in the center of virtualization, you see the hard piece as the fabric virtual table. Maybe you are familiar with Smart Data Access, and there we have a virtual table. We extended significantly these uh, virtual table capabilities. Why? Uh, first of all, the fabric virtual table is your single point of access to all remote sources. So your application is accessing a relational structure. It's a table. You can combine this table with other tables. You can uh, in include this table in your views, SQL views, or calculation views. And uh, you don't care where this uh, virtual table is accessing to. And this could be um, either a remote source, that's a classical federation, or it's uh, referencing to a cache or to a replicated subset. And as I said at the beginning, virtualization by default is federation. It's remote access, no duplication of data. But depending on the performance latency or performance degradation and network latency, we can decide to cache data. Not all data, just a subset. Or to replicate data. Why do we replicate data? Maybe we want to keep these replicas, replicas um, durable over time because um, the cache will be empty uh, when you shut down the database uh, or this instance. When you come up, the data are not there anymore. The cache is empty. Uh, with the replicas, they are on disk, and um, they, they are persisted. So they are there. So that means you don't need to replicate uh, for performance optimization. OK, so these are some auto, some, some auto or self-tuning mechanism in HANA Cloud that we will provide and gives you very good real-time performance. And other, other capabilities are um, automatic metadata refresh. So that means if, if the table structures of the remote source is changed, we will automatically adapt um, the structure of the, of the virtual table. OK, so this is about the fabric. Uh, virtual table that we provide with, with HANA Cloud. Next one is flexible scale to your needs. And uh, from the on-prem world, you know, you have your sizing guides, you have your quick sizer, you come up, you come up with a specific hardware, you know, about memory, uh, how uh, cores, disk storage, etc. And then uh, usually you have an oversized system. Reason is that you want to cover peak workloads, right? Then because it's, um, it's, it would be very uh, bad if, um, if your system is undersized and you run into out of memory situations or in an overload situation for your CPUs in your system. So mostly oversized systems that you have on prem. And uh, with HANA Cloud, we will use the elastic scale capabilities. So that means you will start with an, um, I would say, average sizing uh, of your instance. You need to provision an instance. I mean, you cannot start with nothing. I mean, you, you need to provision an HANA Cloud instance. But this HANA Cloud instance will, will then breathe with your uh, workload. That means for peak workload, we can add computing resources. And if you need more storage, we will add more disk storage to, to HANA Cloud. And this um, leads us um, to an, a much more attractive uh, price point, because you pay what you use. So if you don't use the computing resources anymore, the peak workload is, um, is done. Um, these uh, additional computing resources are not needed anymore, and you need, don't need to, to pay for it. Uh, same if you stop the HANA Cloud instance, then data are residing on disk, and you pay just for the data that are stored on disk. But, but there is no memory, no CPU that you need to, that you need to pay, and there's a real difference to the on-prem world. And um, these are the, the different um, scalability options, and it's a multi-dimensional scalability. You know, you start with the lower left corner where you have a single node system and you scale up just to add, your, just to add some CPUs and a single node, or you just select another node. 
But um, this is the starting point. And then, based on the workload, we can scale up um, or scale out with our compute resources, or we can scale out with our storage resources. And uh, in the upper left side, you see another node that is added in HANA Cloud. And uh, here, the target is that this will be automated. So that means as a, um, as a customer, you don't need to um, um, create another node for your HANA Cloud instance. That's automated by HANA Cloud. You can limit that. I mean, you can say, no, I don't want to, I want to keep control. I don't want to add uh, compute resources. Even I have a peak workload. Maybe because of cost reasons. OK, but uh, the nature of this additional node, and we call this compute node, is that you will have um, cores, additional cores and CPUs, and you will have a cache. So it's not an in-memory data store or main store that, uh, where you have the data that you know from a uh, classical HANA uh, database. It's just a cache where this compute node is working on. And the cache is, uh, uh, is populated with data, with the data set that is required by this compute node. And we can add multiple compute nodes. It's not one. You can, you can add more and more. It's depending on the, depending on the workload. And um, as I said, the target is here to automate and also then to remove the compute nodes when they are not required anymore. In the same way, we can uh, scale uh, on the storage dimension. That means we can add storage uh, capability or capacity to, uh, to the HANA Cloud instance. Not necessarily another, uh, another in-memory node that you maybe know from an uh, on-prem scale-out cluster. Maybe this could be also our internal um, relational data lake. So you see here that uh, you get um, data on disk. Um, and with a certain amount of compute power running on this, on this data. And this relational data lake, I come to that, is attached to the in-memory database. And the beauty is that you can scale in both directions at the same time. And you can shrink. Um, I would say the shrink size uh, or the, sh the shrink direction is more on the, on the compute dimension. Um, if you have data and if, if they are centrally stored in your relational data lake, uh, you will not release these data. You will not remove them anymore. I mean, you have them there. You want to process on this. So I cannot imagine that you will shrink it with your storage sizes. So, but you can add storage capacity and then um, grow and shrink with your compute power. So it's a multi-dimensional scale that we will provide with HANA Cloud. And the next um, um, cap capability for HANA Cloud um, to use the economies of scale in the cloud infrastructure is storage. What I said before, sorry. What I said before, on top we have in memory. It could be DRAM or persistent memory. So both are supported. Then you have um, a native storage extension, a relational data lake, and um, the, the target is here that we control in HANA Cloud the, the optimal data placement of your data. We will do this um, in the first version in a manual step and then in a semi-automatic semi step where we run uh, recommendation apps that are optimizing um, or they are finding an optimized place for your data. And then you have the decision to make, um, to, to replace the data or not. And you see that uh, for each storage option, there are KPIs for performance, data volume, and price. And um, that's a trade off. And that depends on your workload, on your application, on your um, requirements, where data should be located. But um, again, um, we try to automate to give you the right direction, uh, depending on your business context. So this is the way how it goes. And you see here also that um, some object stores, cloud object stores like Azure Data Lake or Amazon S3 or Swift or Google Cloud Storage, uh, they are also part of this pyramid on the um, lower side. Um, 
these um, object stores are not controlled by HANA Cloud. But why we have it uh, here included in a data pyramid, we can access it. We can access it, but we leave the data where they are. We can ingest data from this uh, storage, uh, from this storage layer uh, into our relational data lake for sure. But if the data volume capacity exceeds our own capacity, uh, why should we why should we remove these massive amount of data? I mean, we can access them remotely, uh, and we 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 handle them as a, a data store in this uh, in this data pyramid, but we will not um, move them into HANA Cloud. Okay, this is a more detailed. Um, picture of uh, nat the native storage extension. And what you see here is that's our disk store natively um, included in our HANA core database. It's, um, it's part of the index server. It's not that runs as an extra process or extra attached um, storage, not at all. It's a part of the index server and of the core. And what happens here is that we have an additional buffer cache um, that handles our, our disk storage and um, loads and unloads data page-wise from, from tables, partitions, or columns. And a page is a 64 kilobyte chunk that is loaded or unloaded by the buffer cache. And uh, uh, data or columns that are in NSE, um, they, they are handled like any other table, any other data in, in the memory. So there is no, from an application perspective, there's no difference. It's absolutely transparent. And um, yeah, so easy to enable. And as I said, there will be uh, some uh, recommendation applications that um, give you the right advice for NSE. Um, the built-in relational data lake is IQ technology. And um, it's managed by HANA Cloud. And um, it's an, uh, a store that we that it's a store that we just connect with SDA, an optimized SDA connection. And um, we will use natively IQ in a way to say, OK, um, IQ is a columnar database, but not in memory. So it's specialized on disk operations. So we leave all these uh, strengths of IQ in IQ. We do not. Uh, let's say, adapt um, op these disk operators to our own operators. We, we just keep IQ as it is, and we just natively forward um, queries on the data lake to, I to the IQ query processor and get back the results via this optimized connection. Um, next question is how HANA Cloud fits into this picture of SAP Cloud Platform. And here you see that SAP Cloud Platform is a kind of marketplace for um, a various set of services, business services, platform services, uh, connectivity services, development services. You can use them for your applications running on Cloud Foundry, connecting to S4 HANA, uh, BW4 HANA to, 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 to add some extensions. And these services are helping you to connect or to develop or um, to do um, uh, your, your application logic. And HANA Cloud is a data ser a storage service in the SAP Cloud Platform. So it can be used by any application that runs in the SAP Cloud Platform. But HANA Cloud itself is deployed in Kubernetes. So it runs not in, on the Cloud Foundry stack. However, the SAP Cloud Platform is our uh, facilitator to provision HANA Cloud instances, to monitor, to bill, and also to meter HANA Cloud. So that means the entry point to provision HANA Cloud is the SAP Cloud Platform uh, Cloud Foundry. Okay? And all these service that, uh, services that you find there they can connect to HANA Cloud, as you uh, may know um, from the beginning. So when you want to uh, provision HANA Cloud, you go into the SAP Cloud Platform cockpit. You select the region 
uh, you select the cloud infrastructure provider and the data center, and then you find the service for HANA Cloud and provision the HANA Cloud service. So this is um, how we fit into um, this um, ecosystem of SAP Cloud Platform. And um, you see here a screenshot of um, the um, provisioning UI for uh, HANA Cloud. You see that you can select uh, CPU, memory. Um, you can select the, um, the disk store and the relational data lake. Um, you, can, you can even say, no, I don't want to have a relational data lake. Then it's not uh, provisioned in, in HANA Cloud. So you have just an in-memory database. And uh, you see also um, a an, an quick overview then um, of, of your data. Um, and then you submit, and then you provision HANA Cloud. And once it's um, in provisioned, you get a SQL endpoint, um, a secure endpoint, where you can, can connect to with your application. You get an, uh, a link to the Cloud, POC, cloud uh, uh, Cockpit as a service, HANA Cloud Cockpit as a service. And um, yeah, that's um, what you get. The Web IDE currently is not part of this provisioning process. Web IDE is an, a development service that needs to provide it separately or provision separately, has a separate pricing. Here, uh, work is undergoing to harmonize this with HANA Cloud, with the HANA Cloud offering um, as well. Uh, but for now, it's separated. Okay? But for HANA Cloud, Web IDE is enabled. You can connect then to HANA Cloud, develop uh, your applications, um, uh, XSA applications, and um, yeah, develop or end model, because the CalcView modeler is part of the Web IDE. OK, if you want to connect um, with, um, with a client uh, application or an uh, uh, front end, um, you need a um, HANA client version 2.4 and, and newer uh, because it provides the capabilities um, for, for HANA cloud connection. Another uh, screen that you see here is once it's provisioned, you see uh, uh, two tiles. Uh, one tile is about the in-memory um, database, and the other one is for the data lake. If no data lake is provisioned in the HANA cloud instance, uh, it's not um, appearing there. But um, you see here um, how many data um, are in memory, how many data are on disk. Um, it's running. It's a first preview. We will provide more information in this tile, but we try to keep it simple. And from this tile, you can even drill into your HANA Cloud to see what data are loaded into the HANA Cloud instance. So how many um, hot data, how many data in your disk store, and how many data in your data lake. That's the, um, the, the, the top part of, of this overview um, screen. And then you get information about the remote sources, because connectivity is a key element of HANA Cloud. And uh, for these elements, uh, for these remote sources, you see here um, that for uh, Azure, we have a connectivity to Azure. Um, we have um, uh, this part. I mean, we need to have uh, here some numbers. In hot, in our own hot memory for, for HANA Cloud, this is on, store, on, on disk, and this blue part is in a data lake. So that means we already uh, uh, we moved some data for performance optimizations from Azure uh, to HANA Cloud, but not all, because it's too much. It's just for performance. But I think it's good to know how Azure is filling our HANA Cloud instance. Uh, with these data, with these replicated data, and how they are claiming our, our memory and our, our disk store here. And this is what we do here for other remote sources as well. That's a, that's a kind of most active remote screen, remote source screen. And this part here is also interesting, because what you see here is are different connection types. So we have a remote table uh, in a remote source. Um, it's, it's in Azure. 
And what we have is we have just a connection. So we even do not have a, a virtual table. We are not federated at all. So it's just connected. It's just, OK, we are ready to start. Uh, the next connection type uh, is federated. It's not depicted here. Federated means we have a virtual table and we have a federated access. Or the connection type is NSE. That means that we, um, we now replicate a subset of data in our disk storage to have an optimized access to this data. And this is um, a an, an combination of overcoming uh, performance degradations because of network latency, because of performance latency in the remote system, combined with and storage optimization, because we do not persist data in our memory. That's the, the memory is too, uh, is for us, it's our um, compute workspace, so to speak, so to speak, for hot data. And uh, so we keep here this data on our disk store. It doesn't hurt. We have enough space there. And we even have, even have uh, a much better performance than uh, accessing um, remotely to Azure. And we can even say the connection type is data lake. So that means we, we, um, we have data in the data lake to access locally, because it's local in our HANA Cloud instance. But it doesn't claim um, space in disk, in our disk store. And, and in memory, it's just in our cheap uh, data lake storage. OK. So how you make use of Sapana Cloud? So and I think these pictures you know, you know already. Other, the, the other uh, talks did have also these pictures. That's our standard use case. You have an HANA Cloud instance provisioned. You have, your, um, you, you have your remote source definitions. You have your virtual tables. And you just federate with the remote sources. And uh, the, the application on top is just using these tables, uh, Fabric virtual tables, in calculation views or in any other SQL views or SQL queries. So it's built into the, um, in your applications, in your custom application, or uh, in the BI clients, or in, in any other application. OK, so this default use case does not replicate data. We, we just cache data. We, we just uh, optimize the performance in case of uh, significant latency by replicating subsets. And this is a performance optimization. It's not a replication by default. It's just, um, just in case, because uh, the default is just federated access. OK, so that's the primary use case. And another use case, the, the, the second one, is to centrally store data uh, in our um, data lake. So we ingest data from other sources. Ingest means that we do not try to load data from an Azure data lake or from S3 in our own relational uh, data lake. Uh, it doesn't make sense. It's a massive amount of data you need to move. And um, our built-in relational data lake is definitely not as cheap as S3. Not because um, our relational data lake provides uh, querying capabilities and also transactional capabilities, and it's not given with, with uh, object stores. But uh, what we do is we ingest data from event streams, from click streams, from, from whatever sources that are creating, producing data. And um, with an, a streaming service or a message queuing uh, service uh, in front of HANA Cloud, we can ingest data directly in, in the relational data lake. And we will not do this ingestion via our in-memory a database, we can do this directly from the source into, into um, the data lake, into IQ. And uh, so that we can then um, analyze this data locally in HANA Cloud. And um, the third use case um, is, I think, um, a reflection of the situation that I showed at the beginning of my talk, when you start with your on-prem data center. You have your on-prem um, uh, system. It's an NEDB or any backend system where you have your application uh, running on. 
or it's an S4 HANA or BW4 HANA or SAP HANA system. And you see that um, HANA on-prem systems, they have, a, I think they have an advantage. Therefore, here you see an extra box, and I tell you why. Okay, now you add a HANA Cloud instance. And here, in this use case, you really replicate data. That's a, a real-time replication that you set up. Um, we provide um, the, um, the tooling in the cockpit. And what you do is you replicate a subset of data into HANA Cloud to run analytics to offload workload from your on-prem system. So it's really the way to say, OK, my on-prem system is um, is not able to serve specific workloads. And there are two alternatives. You buy new hardware in your data center. The question is, um, what happens after this peak workload with, your, with this additional hardware? It's, it's underutilized. So the better way is here. You have an HANA Cloud instance that is provisioned on demand based on the workload. Uh, maybe once a week, once a month, once a year, whatever. And then you, st you stop this HANA Cloud instance when it's not required anymore. And there's no costs. Maybe a disk storage costs, but they are quite cheap. So it's on demand. You add on demand resources to your on-prem system. right? And with this real-time replication, you, um, you even uh, persist data on HANA Cloud for later usage. And you can. Uh, Scale is maybe a bit misleading because it's not a scale-out cluster. You stretch your on-prem system. You, you stretch your on-prem system to, uh, to the cloud with HANA Cloud. And you can even federate. And this federation then works um, from the, between HANA to HANA. So that means um, behind the scenes, when you connect with your application to the on-prem system, behind the scenes, we can use um, um, connectivity to HANA Cloud, connectivity to cloud remote sources without the need to upgrade this on-prem system or to uh, do some, some um, extra custom development, whatever. Uh, you do this just by connecting or federating with the HANA Cloud instance. And this is actually the starting point for this migration path. So that means the more data you have replicated to HANA Cloud, the more are you familiar with the HANA Cloud instance and the capabilities, the easier is the way to transition to the cloud and finally uh, have HANA Cloud as your leading system. And then the on-prem system is handled like a remote source. You, you switch the leading system at the end. But again, this is not necessarily given. There are companies that they cannot uh, move data into the cloud because of data privacy, of IP um, uh, reasons. So they, OK, my build, OK, this display is broken now. Now it's, it's, it's up again. OK, so, um, so that means um, we have um, two, I think, two deployments. Uh, then uh, one is you have this um, HANA Cloud and on-prem system in case customers cannot move data or not all, all data to HANA Cloud, or a customer transitions finally to HANA Cloud, and then HANA Cloud is the leading system, and you can then um, elim eliminate your on-prem system um, uh, eventually, or uh, you use this as a remote source. OK, and if you, uh, that's a really a preview, uh, if you uh, handle this, um, Scenario in your on -prem, on your on-prem side, there, there is an extension in the cockpit saying, "Okay, we have um, we have workloads over the week, over the day that is exceeding the resources of my system. It will be uh, um, notified in this kind of calendar uh, calendar view." And then you switch on um, at the HANA Cloud instance. You bring this up. OK, you have provisioned uh, before, because you, need, you have a kind of license. You, you need an account. You provision, but then you shut down the HANA Cloud instance. There are no costs. And then whenever you switch on, the HANA Cloud instance will be, will be started. 
and gives additional power to your on-prem system, right? And then you can switch it off when this peak workload is, is uh, not given anymore. OK, so this is just how you control from the on-prem side the HANA Cloud instance, OK? So what's next? Um, strategic direction. Um, HANA Core, so HANA development itself will be continuing, right? We have an on-prem code line. It will be continuing. However, we have another code line for HANA Cloud. And uh, we, we use, we reuse these core principles, but in another code line, OK? This will be combined with cloud native capabilities. You see here, zero downtime, uh, zero admin, multi-cloud support, elastic scale, microservice architecture. So this is the, the combination of uh, what we reuse from HANA Core um, that we inherit uh, from, from the on-prem world in our HANA Cloud code line and HANA Cloud product line. And then finally, we add um, continuous innovations. And here you see that we will continue with uh, the Fabric Virtual Table with, um, with online, uh, online operational capabilities um, to, um, for, to have a zero um, downtime approach. So whenever tables are uh, indexes are created, tables are repartitioned, tables are, um, um, have a changed structure. We will do this online without uh, a business downtime activity. Uh, with the relational data lake, uh, we will do new innovations and uh, also with the data tiering, which is the usage of the different storage options in a more automated and intelligent way. Our um, we will continue with the, with the query engine, with simplifications, and automated uh, database operations. So uh, the, the common um, word here is autonomous database. Um, and this is also what we, will, uh, what we will continue in our strategic direction with HANA Cloud. And on top, a unified development experience for our developers. Um, running on, on HANA Cloud and a an unified administration experience. Next milestones are that um, we just start a pilot program with pre-selected customers. So we co-innovate with them. Uh, they are known to us. Um, this will run until GA. Then we will come with uh, GA in Q4, which is now, but more precisely, it's end of the year. And the trial account comes in Q1 next year. Tile account means you can, you can have a free instance with a, with a very limited size and a limited period of time uh, to try out. And uh, in case you are an HANA as a service customer or um, HANA on-prem customer, uh, we will provide migration services uh, to migrate data to, um, to HANA Cloud. Okay, why we talk about the migration and not an upgrade? Because we have, two, we have two different code lines. HANA as a service is a different code line than HANA Cloud, as said at the beginning. And HANA Cloud is also a different code line than, um, than HANA on-prem. And bi-weekly release cycles, they come uh, immediately after general availability. So just for simplifications, I put it here at the end. Um, of this slide. So these are the next milestones in our journey with HANA Cloud. So we are just at the beginning. There's a huge potential in HANA Cloud. Uh, that's the future direction, definitely. And um, yeah, we are looking forward to, to, um, to, to, uh, to give this to the market and to our customers. All right. OK, I think we are at the end of the tech ad. So these slides are obsolete. Um, nevertheless, thanks for your attention. Uh, have a good, uh, safe trip. Uh, home and see you next tech ad. Thank you.